Thank you for um, joining us here at the Affinity Intercultural Foundation this lunch series. Um, I suspect very few of you know who I am. It's not necessarily terribly important, but I suppose we all do need a name. Uh, my name is uh, Margaret Beasley. I am the president of the New South Wales Court of Appeal. I have a, um, an association with Affinity for um, some time, and I have the honor of being one of the members of its advisory board. May I commence um, by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation as the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we stand. We pay our respects to their elders, both past and present. For those of you who are in affinity for the first time, um, I'll just mention a few words about it. Affinity was formed by um, a group of young Australian Muslims, um, mostly of Turkish background, uh, in 2000 and it became incorporated in 2001. The aim is to promote multiculturalism and to foster intercultural and interfaith dialogue and doing that by building bridges between different parts of society. Hence an, a luncheon like this. One of the um, great, I think, um, pushes, if I can put it that way, that organisations like this have achieved over time is to integrate uh, the, the major uh, sectors and establishments of and institutions of society, including the court. And one thing that has been introduced, not directly um, at the instance of affinity, but certainly with their support, um, is to now have an opening term ceremony at the Gallipoli Mosque. And uh, except for uh, the great travellers who have been to the Mosque, there were, um, I would think, something like 90% of the judiciary who had never stepped uh, inside a mosque, and it has been um, a most wonderful, um, important, and, and in its own way, very spiritual um, occasion for the legal profession. Just as we as a legal profession commence the beginning of term each year by going to the Red Mass, um, by going to the uh, St. James Church, the synagogue, and the um, Orthodox and Coptic churches. And we have now added into um, our sense of community uh, those who are of the Islamic faith, and we have made great friends through it. I will tell you in a moment one, one story that came out of that, but to, if I may return to affinity for a moment, um, Affinity does wonderful things. It has these wonderful lectures, and we have the most, two of the most wonderful people here today to speak to you. Um, but it organises international study tours, um, surprisingly often to Turkey. Uh, it does academic conferences, cultural exhibitions, Ramadan iftar dinners. Uh, and for those of you who aren't into that yet, uh, Ramadan this year uh, commences on the 17th of June. Um, and if you can become involved in that, it is also a terrific experience. Um, it's also been involved in government-sponsored projects. And the idea of each project is for us all to get to know each other, um, whatever our background is. And the idea is really to continually expand the circle of affinity supporters and to assist affinity in working in partnership with different segments of society. One of the great, and it's a very colloquial type of story that came out of the last occasion when we went to the Moscow beginning of this year. Um, I was speaking to a young Muslim lawyer, and she uh, she was trying to explain what it was to go to work every day um, in in a full you know, veil and, and, and clothing, colourfully so, but nonetheless not the way um, the majority uh, in society would work. And she was just trying to express how she felt, and I said, "Is it like this at the end of the day?" You're just an Aussie kid, and that's the way you want to be treated? She said, absolutely. She was brought up here in Australia, sees herself as Australian, but has a tradition and a culture which we need to respect and which we really should embrace because it is a culture and a tradition um, and a spiritual tradition as well of great depth. May I uh, now introduce the facilitator of our program for today, Justice Shane Marshall, who's sitting over here on my left. Uh, Justice Marshall and I were colleagues in the Federal Court of Australia. Um, he did an amazing number of things. All I did was move one court. Um, 
he is a judge of the federal court, he's a judge of the industrial relations court, and has been so since 1995, after a career at the Victorian Bar of about 14 years. His specialty was in industrial relations and employment. In 2003, Justice Marshall received a centenary medal for services to industrial relations. And uh, amongst his sort of judicial accomplishments, which are numerous, <coughs> Uh, he was an additional non-resident judge of the Supreme Court of the Australian Capital Territory, sitting in both its trial and appellate divisions. He has an academic background as well. He has been on the board of the law faculty of Monash University, and he currently sits on, its, on the replacement external persons advisory committee for the Monash law faculty. And um, for those of academics in the, in the room, and I would include Professor Gillian Triggs in this, I'm sure, over the years, she has welcomed the assistance that can be provided by those in the profession to those who are coming into the profession. In September 2013, Justice Marshall became one of the inaugural ambassadors for the Wellness and the Law Foundation, a joint initiative of the Law Institute of Victoria and the Victorian Bar. In October 2014, Justice Marshall became Deputy Chair of the Advisory Board to the Australian Intercultural Society which is an interfaith dialogue body. And in 2015, earlier this year, he became an adjunct professor in the School of Law at the University of Western Sydney and a director of the WCRF Community Partnership Trust. Justice Marshall, in very ably, as you will see, facilitated today's program. Thank you.